Hi everybody, it's Mary Claire, and today I'm going to talk to you about hot flashes and menopause symptoms. Very exciting, I know. I was inspired to talk about this today because um, we have early conference on Wednesdays, and I was walking into the hospital about 6.45 with one of my partners, and the entire back of her scrubs were completely soaked. It looked like she had, she has really short hair, and I thought, it's not her hair dripping down. I mean, why is she, I said, why are you so wet? She says, girl, hot flash. And I said, I have medicine for that. And she said, well, I don't like to take medicine. So I thought, okay, that's fine. You can sweat. Um, you know, I have patients who come to me all the time. And usually by that time they come to me and make an appointment, they are desperate. Their hot flashes are so bad that they are disrupting their sleep. Um, and when your sleep gets disrupted, as Dr. Matsumura on this team page can attest to, everything else goes completely out of whack. So they mostly come to me because they're having embarrassing, soaking incidents in public places where they don't want to be, or um, they are not getting a good night's rest and are absolutely miserable during the day. So there is a lot of misinformation and misconceptions about what is available. Um, for the treatment of hot flashes. So I'm going to go through some of that information with you. So if you see here, I'm going to flip this around for just a second. Um, well, I'll show you all this stuff. Okay. This is the American College of OB-GYN Practice Bulletin on the treatment of menopausal symptoms. Okay. It's long. It's got a lot of data and information. So, you know, my job is to read all this for you and break it down into terms that you can understand. Um, I'm not going to read it to you. Of course not. Um, also, for those of you who, oh, there's me with Oprah. Yay, that's a long story. I'll tell you about that later. Um, I really am board certified. Here's all my <laughs> diplomas and degrees. Sometimes I, I really am a real doctor. Uh, lots of you who don't know me well who are on my page sometimes question if I am. I am a board certified OBGYN physician. I am Alpha Omega Alpha graduated, top of my class. Um, and now practice academic medicine at the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston, where I'm associate professor in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Okay, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about hot flashes. So when you look up the textbook definition of menopause, um, it is considered to be the cessation of menses, stopping your period for a year, then you're done. No more bleeding. Any bleeding after a year, you need to go to the doctor, okay? However, the ovaries don't just die um, overnight. They sputter like a jalopy. And so you'll have a few good months and then a few more months and like through that time your cycles will become erratic. You could have no bleeding, heavy bleeding, lots of periods, no periods, skipping all around. And all through that some of the hot flashes and other issues. Another issue that people don't like to talk about is vaginal dryness. So the lining of the vagina and the cervix is very estrogen dependent. And when we take estrogen away, um, and it, it happens faster in some women than others, the tissue of the vagina will become very, very thin and prone to injury. And the amount of mucus and la natural lubrication that we make every day, every week, every month will start dropping, dropping dramatically. Also over time, the caliber, the, the diameter of the vagina will start to shrink, um, especially if you're not using it on a regular basis through sexual activity or other activity we can talk about later. Um, and intercourse can become very, very painful to the point that it's excruciating. Okay, so what can you do about that? The number one most effective treatment for vasomotor symptoms or hot flashes and vaginal dryness, vaginal pain issues is going to be replacement of hormone therapy, okay, or hormone therapy replacement HRT. Um, that sounds scary for a lot of people because they worry about breast cancer. Well, you know, they worry about heart disease. They worry about all the negative things that could potentially happen when we give your body back the estrogen that menopause has taken away. Um, here's some good news. If you're just treating the vagina, not every woman's going to have hot flashes and good for them. And it's a little hard to predict who's going to have them and who's not. If you're just treating vaginal atrophy, we use a much, much lower dose and we only put it locally, meaning a vaginal cream, a pill, or a ring that we can give you the estrogen therapy where you need it. All of those are going to require a prescription. There are no compounded that I know of or over-the-counter remedies that are going to successfully help with that. 
lubricants will buy you some time and there's some good lubricants um, on the market but let me warn you there are lots and lots of lubricants i went to the grocery store the other day to check them out there's flavors there are warming elements there are things with tea tree oil and peppermint oil in them let me tell you if you are having vaginal atrophy and vaginal dryness and thinning of the vaginal walls please do not put any warming agent or flavored agent in that area because the skin is easily broken and it will burn like crazy and you'll actually do more damage than good I recommend to my patients for lubricants plain KY jelly or something called Silk E, um, which is from the KY people. And there's also something called Astra Glide that was made for the astronauts in NASA. I don't know what they do with it, but um, it's an excellent vaginal lubricant. It's not water-based, it's silicone-based, so it doesn't dry out. Uh, KY actually will evaporate and make you more sticky and a little drier. It's great in the beginning, but it doesn't last very long. You have to keep reapplying. Okay, so back to hormones. If none of the lubricants are working and you really want to try to get your vagina back to where it was pre-menopause, you're going to need some estrogen therapy. And again, you need to, that's where you need to make your appointment, go to your physician, and talk to them about the different ways that we can get it to the vagina, the pill, the creams, um, or the ring that's available. Okay. Hot flushes. Um, we do have hormone options. They work the best when you like line up women and you give them all these different therapies. Um, the people who take the hormones are going to work and they're going to work immediately. I tell my patients when, I, when we go through the risks and the benefits and they decide that they want to go ahead and start on hormone therapy, um, orally or, or transdermal or whichever method we choose, um, that they will feel better that night, that they should have a good night's sleep that night. That's how fast it works. So... Um, there are some non-hormonal options as well. Um, there are, um, I'm going to pull up, make sure I don't, um, the non-hormonal options are, um, there are, there's clonidine, which is a traditional blood pressure medication that actually works pretty well for hot flashes. There's also something called Effexor, which is used in, um, patients with some anxiety and depression that for whatever reason does work well for hot flashes. I'm a big fan of Neurontin, um, which is an older medication that has been around for um, years, used to treat chronic pain. Um, most of my breast cancer patients who are coming to me for treatment of hot flashes um, do take it, and it seems to be working really well, or patients who can't take estrogen for medical reasons. Um, you take six to 900 milligrams at night, and it seems to be pretty safe. It doesn't work great for everybody, but it is a very nice alternative. There are a lot of over-the-counter options available, which are what we call phytoestrogens. Um, they are plant-based compounds, phyto means plant, that like soy and black cohosh, which are um, super high in um, products that are very similar to estrogen under the microscope. So they bind weakly to the estrogen receptor. However, when you look at long-term, like big studies and data, they don't work well. They don't really show much of a difference versus placebo. Though, in my patient population, I do have patients who have tried some of the over-the-counter herbal things and seem to be doing well with them. Now, the big controversy comes, um, and that's what most people want to know about, is if you decide, okay, I'm in for hormones, but what's the deal with the bioidentical hormones, okay? There is much ado about this and the safety profile. So what I want everybody to understand, estrogen is estrogen. There are synthetic compounds of estrogen. Um, the conjugated equine estrogen, something called Primarin uh, on the market, been around forever. It is considered a synthetic estrogen and not bioidentical. Bioidentical is usually plant-based and is exactly similar to the natural estrogen found in our bodies um, chemically. Okay, there are FDA, um, FDA does approve many, uh, many variations of the bioidentical. However, when people think bioidentical, they're thinking of the compounded forms. The problem with compounded forms is not that they don't work, okay? It is estrogen and they probably will work. The problem is they're not FDA regulated. There is no testing. We don't know if there's any additives. They can't tell you what else is in it. They can't test the purity, the quality, or the efficacy. It's somebody in a lab mixing up something in, you know, with a grinder 
putting it in a pill, a patch, a ring, whatever, and giving it to you and saying it's bioidentical. If you really want bioidentical and think that it will work better for you, the safety profile is no different than the conjugated equine, okay? There's not, they're not safer, they don't have less chance of cancer, but there is estradiol available that has been regulated and tested over the, um, by the FDA that you can get by prescription, okay? Um, and it's called Estrace is the brand name and Estradiol is the regular name. It comes in a pill and they also have it in a um, uh, cream as well. So there are also patches that are available as well. Okay, so also if you decide you're going the hormone route and you still have a uterus, you need to add progesterone to your hormone replacement therapy. So estrogen plus progesterone together if you have a uterus. Don't forget why. Because people who take estrogen um, who still have their uterus, the lining of the uterus is still there and it's still susceptible to stimulation from estrogen compounds. Progesterone is protective for endometrial cancer. So if you take unopposed estrogen, meaning estrogen without progesterone, you still have a uterus, you are dramatically increasing your risk of having endometrial hyperplasia or endometrial cancer. So it's important you take estrogen with the progesterone either every day or at least for one to two weeks out of that month to protect the lining of your uterus from developing hyperplasia or cancer, okay? Um, I um, am a big fan of hormone replacement therapy in the right patient. I'm very careful and make sure your physician goes through all of your options with you and goes through all of the risks so that together you, you can make the right decision. If you choose to try some of the herbal products first, most health food stores um, that are locally owned usually have someone pretty knowledgeable in there to help you. Just remember that the safety and efficacy of all of those products in there have not been tested because they're considered to be nutritional supplements. And we don't know, it doesn't, you know, we don't have any strong data with the safety of those, especially if you have a history of breast cancer. Um, so if anybody has any questions, let me know. And um, I'd love to answer them for you. Okay, I'm looking down. Um, and so, oh, everybody asked me, am I going to take hormones? Absolutely. I will. I don't have um, any significant estrogen receptor, you know, cancer in my family. And I um, was on fertility drugs for a long time to try to get my daughters into this world. And I got to experience some mini menopause through some of the different medications. And I was a not very happy person and I didn't sleep and I had horrific hot flashes and I watched what my mother went through. So I'm not super interested in doing that if there's a you know, fairly safe way and I understand my risks for me to avoid that happening to me. So everybody, thanks for joining live. You can private message me with any questions that you don't want to put on. Um, and there's probably some stuff I forgot. Uh, I'm looking through, let me see real quick. So treatments, um, I didn't talk about uh, tibolone. Um, and then, oh, paroxetine is also another treatment for, it has been shown to be efficacious in the treatment of hot flashes. So clonidine, gabapentin, paroxetine, and effexor. All right, everybody, have a great day. Bye.